Now, Casey is trustee of Marilyn's charity, Enough Abuse UK. But what she didn't tell us at the time was her own reason for wanting to support the work that Marilyn does. Uh, but today, Casey, you're, you're ready to reveal a very personal story behind the reason that you support Marilyn. Yeah, well, I, I started work in the 1970s and there was literally no child protection at that time. You know, when you think about the things that happened with children's entertainers and um, of that time. Um, How old were you at the time? I was eight, eight. at the time. So I started, when I started working. That wasn't mm -hmm. when um, the, the other things happened. And um, and what, I've, what I realise now is, is that um, paedophiles, they do... Um, they work in, in plain sight. Yeah. So it starts off with something very innocuous like, uh, you know, tickling or maybe even um, singling you out, um, you know, telling you you're special and, you know, you're the really talented one mm -hmm. and making you feel very special. Um, and this is kind of what happened to me. And it was um, someone much older than you. Oh, yes, yes. It was in a, produ a, a production. Um, and uh, it, what he, it was very inappropriate what he was doing. And I felt it was inappropriate at the time, but I didn't... Because it was being it was being done in front of everybody, it kind of normalised it. Mm. So you felt like, well, you know, that nobody's saying it's wrong, but uh, you know, the tickling was inappropriate. Um, and then he would take me to um, more and more. Um, private places so and and that's what happens it's predatory it's it's incremental um and so children often don't realize first of all what's happening but as as it goes on that's when um then it, when then it can turn into but something you're only eight i mean when yeah. you think about it you were only eight and, and even adults way, what do you know groomed, about that adult world. world at that stage well yeah you don't and you don't you, you you kind of don't understand what they're doing um and and when things start moving forward um I think you, you then kind of freeze. You don't know what to do. You don't know who to tell and you don't know what to, what to say. I was very fortunate. Someone in the production team noticed what was happening um, and it kind of saved me, really. Um, made sure that um, they stood in front of me when I was with this person um, and then would always remove me once I'd finished with what I was doing with them, you know, on the stage. Um, and so it was... It, it, it was it was quite when now I look back on it, mm. um, it, it made me feel very um, hyper aware. Because um, if this person was tickling you, they were already touching you. Well, exactly. They'd already crossed that line. Yeah. yeah. You know, they weren't somebody. So they were touching your clothes and your body yes. through your clothes. Yes. And I was a bit I was a bit older than eight. So I was, mm. I, you know, I was, you know, starting puberty. And so they were touching areas that that, you know, were growing. Um, and and so that felt very odd and weird. Um, but like I say, Nobody said anything. What so, do you think but now you... as an adult looking back, thinking, you know, that nobody said anything, that it's done in plain sight? Because mm. I would like to think that if I saw anybody doing something like that, I would either take the child to one side and say, you, you OK? Mm. Or take the person to one side and say, what the hell do you think you're doing? You don't Well, that's why I think it's children. so important that we have these quite stringent rules. Mm. And I know a lot of people say things like, you know, oh, you know, teachers uh, are being put off putting bandages on children or, or applying sun cream or those kinds of things. But we need to have that separation between what is appropriate and what is inappropriate. I was just going to bring that up because you talked about, you know, being touched and all mm. of that. And... And whereas, you know, we all agree that everything that's going on like that is shocking, but nevertheless, there are some very interesting stats about teachers. For example, you were talking about not putting a plaster on. There are some teachers who, well, they're not allowed to do it now, but, I mean, they feel awful if they can't comfort a child or put a sticking plaster over a cut or something like that. And the official stats say that in 2016, the number of men applying to be teachers had fallen for the fifth time in as many years. Uh, in 2010, over one in four teachers were men, but last year dropped to one in nine. And nowadays, and this comes from the General Teaching Council for England, the stats show that only one-eighth of teachers are men. And a lot of people feel it's because of that, because mm. they're accused of being paedophiles or I don't know whether whatever. those stats come... Though, that's the reason why men aren't taking up that up as a profession. But if that's the case, then that's the case. Um, you know, I think that it's really important that we separate children from being alone with 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 adults um, from being taken off by them I mean when I did a worst witch I was um, working with lots of girls and we had a really stringent mm. compliance conversation mm. where we were not allowed to single out the girls we weren't allowed to travel with them in the car we weren't allowed to go anywhere privately with them go to the toilet even if they asked you yeah. know even if it's very innocent we have to make that separation mm. very strong